This is the Pubcast. I'm John Loomer, and today we're going to talk about custom metrics in Ads Manager. Let's go. All right, so I first covered custom metrics in Ads Manager more than two years ago now. Um, but the thing is, most advertisers don't even know that this feature exists. But they can be extremely valuable. So why? Well, Ads Manager provides a ton of metrics that you can use, of course. I mean, it's just dozens, hundreds, whatever, of metrics. This includes standard events, custom events, custom events, custom conversions, but also all the other rates and link clicks and engagement, everything, right? Um, but they don't necessarily do a good job of summarizing what's important like into a single score right so and the other thing is maybe you care more about some metrics than others or um, and, and facebook's not accurately reflecting that so with custom metrics you can actually combine metrics with a formula to express your results differently all right, so let's talk about that. Bottoms up. So there are two different places where you can create custom metrics. So either in your custom ad reports or within Ads Manager itself. So the process for creating custom metrics is, is the same thing either way in each case. And it doesn't matter where it is you create them. So you can use the custom metrics in Ads Manager that you created in custom ad reports and vice versa. So within your custom ad reports, if you use custom ad reports, and if you don't, no big deal, don't worry about it, um, you'll see the option to create a custom metric within the metrics area on the right. So this is where you select metrics to customize your pivot table. So within Ads Manager, you can see the option to create a custom metric when you customize columns. So there's a link at the top by the search bar to create a custom metric. Cheers. So I'm about to talk about some more complicated examples, but I just I want to provide an example in the simplest form, all right? So you're driving traffic to your website with ads, and you know that some of those outbound clicks don't become landing page views, and that could be a problem. A low percentage would represent really low quality. So it could be accidental clicks, bots, quick abandons, whatever. And so yeah, you could have two columns, one for outbound clicks, one for landing page views, and you can kind of keep an eye on them. Or you can actually use a custom metric that finds the ratio between landing page views and outbound clicks. So that's just a super simple example I want to provide a couple of specific ways that I've used custom metrics that I want to explain next. Cheers. All right, so first we can use custom metrics to express an engagement score. So if you run an engagement campaign, you'll probably optimize for something like video views or post engagement. So the biggest problem here is really with post engagement. That metric consists of a ton of things like post shares, comments, reactions, post saves, page likes, post interactions, three second video views, photo views, link clicks, right? So the problem is that all of these metrics are created as being equal. But of course, we don't want that. We know that some of these metrics are more important than others. And we may not care at all about some of those metrics. So a share, for example, can lead to a bunch of extra people seeing your post or ad. Whereas that three second video view could be due to autoplay, which may have minimal impact on the user. So we can create a formula that weights each type of engagement differently. Now, understand this is somewhat arbitrary. Um, I'm not a math major, and you may be super smart when it comes to this stuff uh, to come up with the, the perfect formula. And what you care about, how much you care about each of the metrics, it's gonna be different 
for you than it is for me. And it just, it's fine. It's just, you, you have to come to something that makes sense for you. So I created an engagement score that prioritizes several things. So first of all would be that page likes or followers, but look, that might not happen very often these days. And I know we don't make a big deal out of page likes and followers, but I still see that as being an important engagement. We weight that with a five. Messaging conversation started, which wasn't even included within post engagement otherwise. Four, post shares, three, post saves, two, and then post comments, post reactions, and video plays at 95%, just all a weight of a one. So basically we're adding all those things, including their weights. The formula after adding those things up then divides the sum by the total spent. So again, how you do this up to you. You could do this as a ratio over, over reach or impressions to find a true rate, right? But to me, the cost effectiveness to get all these things is more important than just the pure rate. And, you know, the truth is that sometimes, whether it's a pure rate or based on cost effectiveness, that could still be consistent, but it won't always be. That CPM is a big driver here. Glug, glug, glug. All right, second, I created a traffic score. So if you followed me for very long, you probably know that one of my biggest peeves about Facebook is that there's so little focus on driving and measuring quality website traffic. So if you run a traffic campaign, Facebook doesn't care about what these people do after, after they've been sent to your website. But you probably do, right? So if you rely on Facebook's metrics alone, that result column that's going to be the primary focus that determines success is going to be link clicks, or landing page views. If, that, if that's all you get, Facebook thinks you're happy, but the truth is you want other stuff too. So a custom metric uh, could be much, much better at reflecting the quality of the traffic driven. Now you could do this at a super basic level where you only use the metrics that Facebook provides for you, right? So you could generate a formula that focuses on, yeah, the landing page views, standard events like search and complete registration. I mean, lots of things you could do there, but a custom match metric can also get super valuable if you use custom events and custom conversions like I do. So this gets pretty crazy, but I think you'll understand why this is so valuable to me. So I generated a formula that includes, first of all, uh, registration is completed. Now, I try to avoid including too much bottom, bottom of the funnel here because we're just talking about driving traffic. But that said, if someone, uh, you know, as a result of just reading a blog post or something, ended up registering for something for free, I want to know about that. I'm not going to include purchases here just because that would far probably really screw up the results. Like one person making a purchase, I would have to weight that really heavily and it would throw off the results. But I'm going to include registrations completed. And I'll put a weight of 10 on that. That's what I've done at least. Now, I do include some basic engagement on the post as well. Again, up to you. So I include post shares, which I use a weight of three, post comments and post uh, reactions, which I include a one. And then I use a standard event of searches. So that someone searched for something on my website. I think that provides some indication that they're interested. And just a, a, a one weight. And then a bunch of custom events, right? That whether or not you use these custom events is going to be de dependent on how your website's set up. But um, I also just created a custom event for any time someone clicked on one of the share buttons on my website, right? So the share to Facebook, to Twitter, to LinkedIn, or to email. Once you click that, that executes an event. Um, I put a weight of three on that. Um, additionally, podcast play. So I'll embed a podcast episode related to the, the blog post. And if you click play, um, get a point for that. Watch an embedded YouTube video on that page, get a point for that. If you spend at least 60 seconds on that page, get a point. Uh, if you scrolled a certain amount, I think it's 50% of the page, get a point. And if you clicked other links within the page you get another point so 
in my opinion, including all of this information, just gives far better context into the quality of a visit. So if you scrolled, you spent more time on my site, you played media, you clicked around, you shared my post, these things all represent a very high quality visit. So this one metric can give me a much better idea whether a traffic campaign was worth the money. Because again, worth the money is important here. So I take the sum of all those things, those metrics and weights, and divide by the amount spent. Last call. All right, so that's a rundown of what custom metrics are and you know, generally how I use them. I'm, I don't create a bunch of custom metrics. Um, and honestly, in most cases, like if you're running a purchases campaign, I mostly just care about how many purchases happened, how much did I spend, what's my cost per purchase. You don't need a whole lot more than that. But I, I feel like there's a, a lot of holes when you talk about engagement or traffic and, and measuring the quality of those things. And Facebook doesn't do a really good job of that. Um, so you can still do it. Uh, so I hope this provides some inspiration for you especially if you aren't already using custom metrics. So if you're using them in creative ways, make sure to let me know. Give me a shout, right? Otherwise, thanks for joining me once again on the PubCast. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. Until next time, do awesome things. I'm out.